If you are a military aviation enthusiast and you follow the Indian Air Force, then you would know that recently the Indian Air Force inducted 36 Rafales into its inventory. The Rafales have been quite the controversy since 2015 when the decision was taken to augment the Indian Air Force squadron strength by purchasing 36 Rafales from Dassault. And while these decisions are political in nature, I'm sure these high performance jets are definitely going to benefit the Indian Air Force in the long run. Talking about performance, the Rafale has some impressive bit of acceleration going from breaks off to in the air in under 12 seconds. I leave a link to a channel by Aviation Wall where you can see the Rafale actually taking off in under 12 seconds. So that much about the performance of the Rafale, let's see how this new kit performs while I build it. So my kit of choice is the Revel 148 scale Dassault Rafale C which I will be building in the Rafale EH of the Indian Air Force. Looking at one of the side edges of the box it shows something interesting and that is Revel is under license with Dassault Aviation. It's a 2018 box from Revel Germany but it is made in Korea. That's interesting. One of the smaller side edges of the box has the dimensions of the completely built model and the kit number 03901. Here's a look at the uh, back of the box and a lot of detail here. You can see the uh, photographs of the completely built model and you can also see a color call out for the Rebel colors. However, I will be sticking to my standard Fevicryl colors. Some information about the sprues and followed by the detail of the weapons. As you can see, it can carry a wide variety of weapons which include the BU-12 laser guided bombs, the 1250 and 2250 litre drop tanks, the Mica air-to-air -air missiles, the magic air-to-air -air missiles and the laser designator pod. So here's a look at what's inside the box and we start with the instruction sheet but first we'll look at the decal sheet and this is an amazingly printed decal sheet. It is printed by Revell and you can see that brilliant print on the uh, tiger decals. I'll be using only the common ones to build the Indian Air Force scheme. And here is the instruction sheet. The colored instruction sheet starts with a color call out followed by the uh, sprue map the assembly steps in all the pages and in the end followed by the color call out and decal guide a single plastic bag holds all the sprues So here's the uh, look at the sprues and this is the first sprue with the fuselage halves, the second sprue with the vertical stabilizer and a few weapons like the drop tanks, the third sprue with the uh, main undercarriage, some exhaust assemblies and some weapons, the fourth sprue which is completely of the weapons, the fifth sprue which has the clear parts, the canopy and the landing lights and HUDs, the sixth sprue with some more main undercarriage. Here's the 7th sprue with the wings and the 8th sprue with the drop tanks and other hard points.
assembly began as usual with the construction of the seat and as you can see I'm cutting out the parts of the seat frame the uh, rocket ejectors the frame assembles like so and with a little bit of super glue I just push the uh, seat cushion into the seat frame and the fit was flawless the headrest assembly then follows and just slides into its place very neatly and finally I assembled the uh, rear section which is the rocket pack assembly for the ejection seat and here's the completed model of the Martin Baker Mark 16 ejection seat next I followed it up with the assembly of the uh, cockpit tub and once the assembly was complete I mounted all the uh, assembly parts on an ice cream stick and then prepared it for painting after having painted the cockpit in grey with Bosnian grey primer I used a black sharpie to detail the control column and the throttle I then used various shades like black and grey, white and yellow to detail the switches inside the cockpit. I then used the toothpick method to pick out various switches on the instrument panel and on the switchboards with various shades like white, red and yellow. The ejection seat has some nice bit of seat belt detail molded into it and I used Fevicryl sand color which was prepared by mixing brown and white to detail the seat belts. The seat assembly fits snug into the cockpit tub along with the instrument panel and here you can see the completed cockpit and it looks brilliant. I then started working on the uh, fuselage assembly and I cut out the upper and lower fuselage halves and removed the bracing assemblies and then started assembling the undercarriage gear bay like so. Here's a look at how simple and fantastic the uh, assembly of the nose gear bay is inside the lower half of the fuselage. The cockpit assembly then effortlessly just slides in from the lower side of the upper part of the fuselage and it fits really snug. The instructions then mention drilling of two holes in the rear section of the lower half of the fuselage which I duly did with a pin vise. These basically hold the mounting of the tail hook assembly. And here's something that you need to be careful of. I initially thought that these were parts of sprues that were attached to the uh, canards. However, they're not parts of sprues and they need to be kept intact so that those canards can be moved up and down together. 
and you'll note that the canard assembly is also fantastic and once you slide in the lower part of the fuselage you see that there is a technique to fitting this initially you'll feel that it's bulging out but just a little push inside and the uh, lower section of the fuselage just fits snug into the upper section of the fuselage next was the assembly of the avionics bay covers behind the cockpit and look at how beautifully this fits same is the case with the vertical stabilizer it fits absolutely snug and beautifully The assembly of the upper and lower sections of the left and right wings is equally flawless and look at how beautifully it just fits inside the body of the fuselage. The assembly of the two air intakes was also flawless and you can see that it's got some pretty good bit of detail with those recessed panel lines and the infrared sensors and these modules then basically just slide in to the fuselage very simply like so. Beautiful fit. I then moved on to the assembly of the uh, main undercarriage and the wheels are in two parts they simply fit very snug and with a little bit of a cleanup they looked pretty good now here's something to note the instructions mention that you need to attach the clear part which is the landing light on the front nose gear assembly but if you do that you're not going to be able to mask it and paint it so i left out this assembly for the end Next I moved on to the assembly of the Scalp EG or the Storm Shadow missiles and these I must say are extremely good. They've got about 17 parts so they are a model in themselves and you can position them in a open wing or closed wing uh, position but since my Rafale will be on the ground the uh, wings of the Storm Shadows will be closed and you can see how beautifully the uh, parts are aligning and fitting no gaps whatsoever beautiful fit and here's a look at the entire assembly of the uh, storm shadow wings uh, they basically slot in like so on a pivot and you can position them open or closed I then moved on to the assembly of the uh, 1250 and 2250 liter conformal fuel tanks and I must say that the assembly was equally flawless and just like the uh, Storm Shadow missiles everything just fits like butter. Since I wanted my Rafale to have the uh, GBU-12 Payway laser guided bombs, I began the assembly of the Tialos laser designator pod as well. And once again, the fit is absolutely flawless. I followed this up with the uh, straightforward assembly of the Mica air-to-air -air missiles. After priming the weapons with Bosni Grey Primer, I began painting the Storm Shadow missiles with Ferricoil Dark Grey, which was prepared by mixing 
just ratios of white and black Febisville paints. Following this up, I began painting the uh, GBU-12 laser guided bombs and after masking the center of those, I began painting the uh, front and rear sections of the uh, laser guided bombs with Febicryl sap cream. The weapons assembly was so good that I decided to build all of them out of the box even though not all of them would be mounted on the final finished model. With a bit of white glue then, I fixed the uh, center partition of the canopy into the main canopy frame. I then moved on to the more exciting part of painting or rather I should say unexciting because I simply used Abro SP89 grey paint to spray the entire model the strobe lights that would go on to the uh, missile hard points and the leading edge of the wings were then detailed with a red sharpie I then began polishing off the uh, canopy with Tamiya coarse fine and finished compounds successively buffing the canopy with these materials. It was then time for the uh, markings and insignia and I printed these markings at home and used my standard procedure of applying the decals.
Finally, with the exhaust burners in place, it was time for assembling the final parts together and the final reveal. And here are the final beauty shots of the Dassault Rafale or Rafale EH of the Indian Air Force from 17 Squadron Golden Arrows. My two cents with this kit, it is an amazing kit, built flawless fit, everything fits together like butter. The uh, weapons loadout is absolutely gorgeous and humongous and you can choose a wide variety of loadouts to have, recommended for beginners and advanced modelers alike. Thank you very much for watching this video, if you liked, please consider subscribing, click the thumbs up and the bell icon, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care.